Hello friends, welcome back. We have come one whole circle now and here is the iPhone 12 event recap and my thoughts and my take about that and all my favorite things. To me, the biggest upgrade this year is that pro camera and yes, those are coming to the 12 as well as the 12 pros. And just a little context on why I'm super excited is because I am going to be upgrading this year because I'm coming from an iPhone 10 and the jump from the 10 three generations later to the iPhone 12 Pro Max is going to be awesome and I can't wait. This year round, we have four new iPhones and a HomePod mini. Which is so freaking cute. The iPhone 12 mini is the exact same as the iPhone 12 but with the 5.1 inch display instead of the 6.1 inch display. We have a few major upgrades for the entire iPhone 12 lineup this year. 5G aka speed was the main theme for the entire event and it is coming to the entire iPhone 12 lineup and I thought it was pretty good. At least they didn't limit it to just the 12 Pros. With 5G, battery is a concern, so to help you save battery, Apple came out with the smart data mode. So if you don't need those high speeds 5G, it will automatically switch down to LTE and that will save you some battery. And when you need that high speed, it will switch automatically from LTE to 5G. That's nice, that's great. I mean, 5G, higher speeds. Who doesn't like faster cellular speeds, right? But first, to enjoy that 5G high-speed network, we need to have infrastructure in place. And because of the nature of 5G, it's still a new tech. Not all carriers support it. Some countries don't even support it yet. So as of right now, even though you may have 5G bands in your phone, you may not be able to fully experience how fast 5G is and take advantage of that speed. But it's still good to have because 5G is the future and this will make your phone future-proof. Next, displays. So this year's iPhone comes with a brand new display technology, brand new glass. It's called a ceramic shield glass and is four times more likely to survive a drop without cracking. And I'm excited because it's been a long while since they upgraded the durability of their glass displays. I know it's going to be a big deal to some people because dropping a glass, cracking that screen, it's expensive and it would be really, really nice to have a more durable glass always. But I mean, I haven't really, okay, I'm not going to jinx myself, but I haven't dropped or cracked my screen for, actually in my entire life, I've only cracked my screen once. But I'm not going to jinx myself. Please, please, nothing bad happened to me. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really, really excited for the drop test that I definitely going to come for the iPhone 12s. The OLED Super Retina XDR display with increased screen brightness and the insanely high 2 million to 1 contrast ratio is also coming to the iPhone 12. And yes, I mean all the iPhone 12. This is a huge upgrade for the iPhone 12 and 12 mini. Last year, Apple reserved this display technology for the 11 Pro lineups only. Yep. Always the exclusive one, Apple. Aside from this, the iPhone 12 is thinner, smaller, and lighter than the iPhone 11s. The 12 also has a slightly better battery life than the 11, but the cameras on the 12 are the ones that stand out. There's a new 7-element f1.6 lens on the white lens. It has a 27% increase in light gathering ability, and this means faster shutter speeds and less grainy or noisy photos when taking pictures in the dark, all of this while maintaining sharpness in the photos. Night mode will now be available for all the cameras, and yes, that includes the front camera as well. And now we also have night mode time lapse. I'm just like, ah, all the night photography stuff is coming to the iPhone, and I can't wait to test it out. And finally, the most interesting upgrade to the cameras this year is HDR video recording with Dolby Vision. Well, for lay people like me, I've only heard and learned about Dolby through watching movies and cinemas. So <laughs> this is what I found out about Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision is a HDR format that uses dynamic metadata to accurately map color and brightness levels so that whatever you're capturing on your camera is as accurate as possible. So with this, you're going to be recording more accurate, more lifelike pictures. And because of the name and my association with it, I kind of feel like these videos are going to be closer, a step closer to cinematic graded videos. 
How true that is? We're gonna test it out and stay tuned if you wanna see videos like that. Apple would usually reserve all this crazy camera upgrade stuff to the iPhone 12 Pro Max to make it exclusive to like make it the Pro models. And that's why I am kind of surprised and really excited for this year's iPhone 12. So if you're getting the iPhone 12 this year, it's going to be of really, really good value, especially with all the crazy camera upgrades. However, the iPhone 12 Pro Max is... <sighs> for the rest of us photography nerds who want to take the mobile photography game to the next level, don't worry, we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's basically all of the things that I mentioned and much better. First, the iPhone 12 Pros can record HDR video with Dolby Vision up to 60 FPS instead of the 30 FPS on the iPhone 12s. Apple also introduced Pro Raw, and to me, it's a pretty huge deal. Pro Raw is a new image format. It keeps more data in the image, and this gives you more control when you edit. If it's anything like the raw images that we get from DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, I think that's a pretty sweet deal. Pro Max now houses a bigger sensor. It is 47% bigger, and we all know that larger sensor and more surface area means more light enters the camera, more light can be captured, and this gives you a nicer, cleaner looking image. And tying together the new f1.6 lens, Apple claims that there's an 87% improvement in low light performance, and this to me is a big, big, big deal especially when I'm coming from an iPhone 10. Apple used to suck at low light photography. Samsung phones used to kill the game like easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <sighs> but with all this new tech and the bigger sensor and everything, I'm really excited to see how it fares with Samsung phones and my current iPhone 10 in terms of low light photography. Really excited. Another big upgrade is the Sensor Shift OIS, and this is only for the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, what is Sensor Shift OIS? It is different from the usual OIS on other phones. Sensor Shift OIS means that stabilization is built in the sensor itself, much more effective at reducing camera shakes while you're filming. And one more thing, don't forget, LiDAR. <laughs> We all know that LiDAR is to improve AR functions, but this time, on the 12 Pro lineup, LiDAR does more than just that. Apple is using LiDAR to help cameras see better in the dark, so this means improved accuracy in taking pictures. I mean, the autofocus in low light is going to be six times faster. Wow, really smart of Apple to use LiDAR for photography and filming, because if Apple just said that, oh, we have LiDAR and it's for better AR stuff, I wouldn't be as interested. So what is the difference between 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max? Well, the differences lie in the camera capabilities, just like <laughs> all the time, and color options. iPhone 12 has five colors. I like the red and green very, very, very much. For the 12 Pros, there are four colors, and I'm stuck between Pacific Blue and Graphite. I even did a poll on Instagram and I still can't freaking decide. A lot of people like the Pacific Blue, but let me know if you're getting an iPhone 12 this year, which color would you choose? Comment. <laughs> now let's talk about MagSafe, the new wireless charging feature that's coming with the iPhone 12s. This brings me so much nostalgia. It reminds me it's a throwback to the old MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs with that MagSafe charging. I remember just being able to like play with it, charging and charge, charging and charge during class. That was like my favorite pastime during class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of distracting, but it was it was really fun. But yeah, MagSafe, you have been missed and welcome back to the iPhones, I guess. MagSafe has faster wireless charging than Qi. 15 watts versus 7.5 watts. It would be interesting to see how long it takes to charge up the 12 with MagSafe. Talking about charging, we need to talk about the controversial box. You see this box here? The smaller, thinner, more environmentally friendly box that's gonna be coming with the 12? Yeah, all the shipping with the iPhone 12 is the USB-C to lightning cable. I think the opinions about this is kind of 50-50 and all the memes about this are starting to pop up. And this reminds me of the time when Apple removed the headphone jack. Everyone was making fun of Apple but years later they just copied and followed Apple. I feel like Apple could have made the iPhones this year cheaper or they could make the charging brick or earpods cheaper if you purchase it with the iPhones. But Apple didn't do any of that so... <laughs> I guess Apple's Apple, and that's why I kind of understand why people are mad. I mean, it would just be nice if Apple just reduced the price of the phones because it's hella expensive. 
but I mean, I don't really use the charging brick and the Europods that come with the box, so I can't really complain that much. And because we're still on the topic of charging and I'm not gonna leave it, I wanna talk about USB-C. <laughs> I thought, no, actually I knew kind of from the leaks and rumors that Apple wouldn't come up with a USB-C charging. I mean, if you change the Macs and the new iPads to USB-C, what about the phones? I mean, have you forgotten about your phones, which are like your main sellers? Because you you started this, you pushed the change towards USB-C for the Macs, and now you just stick with Lightning forever. Just saying it would be convenient for a lot of people if you just make everything USB-C. This, 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 this. <laughs> I'm not sure when 120 hertz will come because apparently, according to rumors, 5G takes up a lot of battery, and if they add on 120 hertz to it, it would take up even more, and it wouldn't be feasible or sustainable or something like that. But the argument here is, on a screen size as small as your phone, would you notice the difference between a 60 hertz display and a 120 hertz display? Obviously, yes, yes, yes. But I think Apple prioritizing 5G versus the 120 hertz is a good call because 5G makes it future-proof and with the A14 Bionic chip in the new phones, this year's phones are going to be faster, smoother than previous generations. So you don't really have to worry about that. Another thing I wish could have happened this year was a notchless display. Apple, it's been three years. I mean, one of the reasons why I was holding back from upgrading was because I was waiting for a notchless design, but <laughs> it's 2020 and it's still here. So I'm just gonna upgrade. I'm just, I'm just gonna upgrade, but I can't wait for the future where there's a notchless design. If you have it next year, Apple. <clears throat> But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll be getting the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So let me know what you think about the entire iPhone 12 lineup and which color do you think I should get. I still can't really decide. But yeah, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay maintained, Cherry. Goodbye.